Kia ora, year 12. Um, we're going to do something a bit different today. No trig revision today because I'm a bit sick of it. So instead, a really easy merit level equation solving algebra thing. And then a scholarship question from back in 1978, um, the year I was in year three. Um, and it's very, very similar to one from 2005 that you probably did on Thursday morning last week. So um, pause it here and have a good go at both of them, especially the second one. So your clue for question number two is factorising, and then your second clue is the sum and product rules. And actually, it's very, very similar to that one we did last week, so it should be reasonably straightforward. Hi, do good 1978 calculus. Okay, so the first algebra one is um, the solving one. We've got k root x plus 4 is equal to 2 root x, and we need to solve that for x. So first thing we're going to do is square both sides. We get k squared times x plus 4 is equal to 4x. Um, expanding the left hand side out gives us this. And now I'm going to collect up like terms, so get all the x terms onto the left hand side by subtracting 4x. Now it looks like a quadratic, but don't make that mistake, it's not even that hard. That's just um, x times k squared minus 4 is equal to negative 4k squared. So x is equal to negative 4k squared over k squared minus 4. Um, or more elegantly, 4k squared over 4 minus k squared. Looks nicer. Also, note that we've got a couple of restrictions that we need to mention. Um, if I were marking this, it would be achieved for just giving that, but we need to make sure that we say that k can't be equal to positive 2 or negative 2, right? because that would give us 0 in the denominator, and we know that that's a very bad thing. Okay, on to the more interesting and harder question, um, which is the complex numbers one. Alright, so the first thing we're told is that we've got w, and w is equal to cos of 2 pi on 7 plus i sine 2 pi on 7. Right, and we are asked to show that this 1 plus all of that added up to w to the power of 6 is equal to 0. So I'm sure there's numerous ways to do this. And you can notice that what you've got there is a geometric series, but I'm not going to do anything that complicated. The first thing I'm going to do is to notice that W can be written in shorthand as cis of 2 pi on 7. And I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, well, I've got something divided by 7, and I've got everything up to 7 but not including it. So let's try this. What's W to the power of 7? Well, W to the power of 7... So w to the power of 7 is cis 2 pi on 7 to the power of 7. And we know from multiplication, actually from de Moivre's theorem, that that gives us cis of 14 pi on 7, which is cis of 2 pi. So think about what that gives us. That's just equal to 1. So we've got w to the power of 7 minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so what can I do with that? Well, I suppose I had an equation like this one. Let's go way back, way before we got to complex numbers. Suppose I had x squared plus 4x plus 3 equals 0. And I didn't know what to do with that. Well, I would probably try factorising it. So factorising that one is really easy. I'll get x plus 1 times x plus 3. And so that means that either, if this is 0, the whole thing's 0, or if this is 0, then the whole thing is 0. So I'm going to do something similar um, with my equation down here. And we'll do that on a new slide. All right, so I've got this. Um, w to the power of 7 
minus 1 is equal to 0. And my goal is to show that 1 plus w plus w squared plus all of that plus w to the power of 6 is equal to 0. So let's see if we can factorise w to the power of 7 minus 1. Well, we can. It's w take away 1 times w to the power of 6 plus w to the power of 5 plus w to the power of 4 plus w cubed plus w squared plus w and to match up the minus 1 over here I must have a plus 1 here. Okay so if you're not sure about how I did that it's by basically sophisticated guess and check or you can do Mr. Clark's funky synthetic division thing. So here I've got my w to the 7 then I'm going to have take away w to the 6 plus w to the 6 so that goes take away w to the 5 plus w to the power of 5 and so on. Right, So it all loops up leaving me with two factors for w to the power of 7 equals 0 and that tells me that either w equals 1 or w to the power of 6 plus da 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 exactly what we're after right so either this is 0 or this is 0 but we know that w is not equal to 1 because w is equal to cis 2 pi on 7 which means that what we want must be true so we have 1 plus w plus w squared so that equals 0 so that's the first part of the question done right so we've shown that that sum is equal to 0 now put that in big flashing lights on your piece of paper because we're going to use it in the next part which is looking at showing that two combos of w um, must be roots of a quadratic so what have we got now? Well we've got Z1 is equal to W plus W squared plus W to the power of 4 and Z2 is, what's that, Z cubed plus Z to the power of 5 plus Z to the power of 6 and we want to show that um, Z1 and Z2 are roots of this quadratic z squared plus z plus 2 equals 0. So what do we know about the roots of a quadratic? Well, we know a couple of really useful things. The sum of the roots, if the roots are, so we should really say, let the roots be called alpha and beta. So the sum of the roots is equal to negative b over a and those are our quadratic coefficients so here that's negative 1 over 1 which is equal to negative 1 and the product of the roots alpha times beta is equal to c over a which in this case is 2 over 1 which is just 2 so what we're going to do now is to work out the sum and product here using Z1 and Z2 and show that they satisfy those conditions. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll do the sum of the roots first. This is probably the easier of the two. So we've got Z1 plus Z2 is equal to W plus W squared plus w to the power of 4, plus w cubed, plus w to the power of 5, plus w to the power of 6. So let's reorder that. But we know from above that 1 
plus w plus w squared and so on. So that tells us that z1 plus z2 must equal negative 1. Um, so that's what we wanted for the sum of the roots. Now we need to work out if we get what we need for the product of the two roots. So z1, z2. Okay, so I just managed to lose a whole chunk of recording, um, but that's okay. So we're going to fix it up. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write that thing that I've got, the z1, z2, out in ascending order of powers. And I'm not going to collect up like terms. Mm, something's wrong with the screen there, sorry guys. So there, there we go. We've got 3w to the 7s. We've got a w to the 6 that won't appear on my iPad. Never mind. Right, and we've got to try and force this into equaling 2. Right, remember, because the product of the roots, we want to show that that's 2. So how can I do that? Well, I've got two really useful facts. I've got this thing from the start of the question. We know that that's equal to 0. So we're going to try and take out a factor like that. We also know, and this is, I think, the one that's easy to forget, is that w to the power of 7 is equal to 1. So we're going to use that as well. So what do we have? Well, we've got w to the 4 times, so let's look at what we can knock out. This, this, the mysterious missing w to the 6, all those. Now that should say w to the 10 there. Right, so there's that. And then what have I got left? I've got plus... 2 times w to the power of 7. So that's all looking very good. So that is now equal to w to the power of 4 times 0 plus 2 times 1. So we'll call that one there star. And the second one here, star star. So that is equal to 2. So the product of the roots product of the roots is 2. So what does that mean? Well, that means we're done because we've shown that the sum of the roots of the quadratic is negative 1 and the product of the roots is 2, which is alpha times beta. So if we know those things, we can form a quadratic and the quadratic that we form is z squared plus z plus 2 is equal to 0 as required. Okay, so only two questions because that scholarship one was such a long one. But there's lots of little things I think that are useful in there from both algebra and complex numbers. So make sure you've gone through it really thoroughly. Um, it popped up in 1978 and then again in 2005, so maybe it will turn up in 2018.